bit particular today I'll be talking about how to write a resume, especially in Japan. A resume can be handwritten or typewritten, just like this. Do not use correction tape or cross out your answers by using double lines. Hello everyone, this is Ka from Swimmy Channel. So today's video is about how to find a job in Japan and things to watch out for in interviews. In particular, today I'll be talking about how to write a resume, especially in Japan, because this is absolutely important and necessary when job hunting in Japan. So we're filming this video in May 2020. And right now, I think slowly the economy is starting to move again. And with the economy starting to move again, this means there's an increase in regular workers and part-time workers, especially for those who are looking for prospective jobs. And with the increase of prospective jobs, of course, you want to know how it is to take interviews in Japan. And of course, writing a resume is an important part of that. Actually, since student pa lang naman ako, kakaunti pa lang yung mga seryosong interview ko dito sa Japan. Most of my interviews were for part-time jobs and swear ako na hindi naman sobrang serious yung mga naging interview ko. But of course, when you research ako online, may mga tips on how to do well in a job interview, at ang daming advice na iba-ibang sinasabi eh. What to say, what to wear, how to answer. Hindi sa mga kalito, but I always try to follow the Japanese way as much as possible kahit minsan sobrang daming rules. So the important parts of the Japanese interview are how to write a resume, how to answer interview questions, and manners during the interview. Okay, so first, I'll explain how to write a resume. Paano nga ba magsulat ng resume dito sa Japan? As you can see, here is a general Japanese resume. Here are the points to keep in mind when writing a resume. A resume can be handwritten or typewritten, just like this. Be sure to use black ball pen when writing. Siguraduhin black ng ink ng ball pen mo. You can use the Western calendar or Japanese calendar for the dates. If you want to find a job or change jobs in Japan, you have to use the Japanese style format when you make your resume. And most importantly, when you make a mistake, do not use correction tape or cross out your answers by using double lines. Huwag gumamit ng correction tape or markahan yung papel ng gugit. This isn't allowed. Recruiters will look at your resume and will think, Can this person do things correctly and properly? Isipin ng recruiters kung maayos ka ba magtrabaho. So when you make a mistake, please rewrite your answers properly. Let me explain how to fill in the resume. I'll explain one by one. So here is where you fill in the date on the resume. For the date, let's write the date of submission. If you're sending it by mail, then write the date when you mailed it. If you're sending it by email, online, write the date when you sent your email. If you want to give it directly, then write the date you visited the company to hand in your resume. For the date, it can be Western calendar style, like here, 2020, 2019, etc. Or the Japanese calendar style, so place say 29, 20, Reiwa, etc. When you write the year, if you start out with the Western calendar or the Japanese calendar, make sure it's consistent style format throughout the whole resume, just like here. So next is how to write your name and the reading. The read runner and the font top of the name. So when writing your name, make sure the font for your name is big enough so that your name stands out. Be sure to insert a clear space in between your surname, given name, and the name. Fill in your name in the same order as seen in your residence card or passport. If you have a nickname, it's also okay to write that down, but I think it's better to use what's on your passport or residence card. If the furigana portion is written in katakana, then write your name in katakana. If the furigana portion is written in hiragana, then write your name in hiragana, like here. Now we're going to write your birthday. So, for writing your birthday, make sure if you wrote the date on the resume using the Western calendar, then you write your birthday in the same way. So, if you use 1990, 1991, etc., keep it the same way. Or if you use Heisei 1, Heisei 9, etc., be consistent. Write also your age following the Japanese format. So in Japan, on the year you're born, you were zero years old. Your next birthday, you will turn a year older. Or as a Filipinas now. Then for your ID photo. 
Attach a photo taken at an ID photo machine. Yung mga booths na nakikita mo dyan sa station, sa mall, etc. Or a photo taken at a Photoshop. The best background to use is white, blue, or gray. Also in Japan, photo retouching, like making your skin look better, is not allowed. Sorry friends, bawal mag retouch ng photo. Make sure there is no difference from the real thing. When you're interviewing for a full-time job, wear a suit. A black or navy blue suit is best. For accessories, small or minimal ones are okay. Make sure your hair is neat and clean, especially for those with long hair. Make sure your bangs don't get in your eyes. For those applying for a part-time job, you don't need to wear a formal suit, but it would be good to wear something modest and professional, in black or navy. Ako personally, when I go for interviews, kahit part-time, minsan yung suit yung sinusot ko. If it's obvious the company is a little more chill, casual, ganyan, I'd wear something that's more casual in blue, black, gray, or white. No heavy makeup rin and no rubber shoes. I believe it's better to be overdressed than underdressed. It's better to be safe than sorry. Basta huwag super wild yung photo niyo sa resume at yung susotin niyo sa interview. Next, your educational background. Your educational background. Write your educational background in chronological order. Don't write your work history in this part. Your work history is supposed to be for this part. Then start filling in details after your high school graduation. So your educational background from your college or vocational school. Write the date of entrance when you started school. And also write the date of graduation. Also, if you fill in the school location and country in the parentheses, the resume will be easy to understand. Then for work history. Write the company or companies you work for in chronological order. Then fill in the date when you joined the company and the date when you left. When writing the company name, make sure it's the official name. Don't just write Swimmy. For example, you write here the Swimmy Co. Limited, Kabushiki Kaisha Swimmy. You don't need to include your part-time job experience or your internships. However, you can include your part-time job if it's directly related to the position you're applying for. Now let's talk about your language skills. Write down all the languages you can speak in this portion. The language level can be filled in as daily conversational level, business level, or native level. If you have language test results, be sure to fill in your score. Also, fill in the year and the month when you receive your test results. Do not write languages that are below the daily conversational level. And for PC, IC, and IT and tech skills, you can fill them up here. Fill in any software or IT tech skills that you have. If these skills are already evident in your work history, then you don't need to add them anymore in this part. For Microsoft Office skills, write down what you know, like Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Access, and other similar applications. If you're particularly good at Excel, Pumagaling ka sa Excel, list down what functions you're good at. For those with graphic art skills, you can write Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, etc. For CAD, JWCAD, AutoCAD, Vectorworks, Reddit, Inventor, Katia, SolidWorks, all those special software you can write down down also. If you are an IT engineer, write down the language you use, OS and DB. Next, we'll also talk about your licenses and qualifications. Licenses and qualifications are also written in this part. List down the licenses and qualifications you acquired in your home country or in Japan. If you have a license or qualification that is specific to the job you're applying for, then make sure to include that in your resume as well. If you have a license or qualification that might be useful for the job you're applying for, tagdag mo na rin yun. If you are currently studying and have not yet obtained a license or qualification, please state that you are studying in the self-introduction part of the resume or the PR portion. So for your hobbies and special skills, if you have hobbies or special skills, you can write them down. Sometimes these are the things that the interviewer gets excited about during their interview with you. Talking about your hobbies or special skills are one of the ways to self-promote yourself. Talking about your self-promotion and your motivation. In these parts. When writing down your self-promotion and your motivation to apply, please refer to the skills that you've written earlier and your other hobbies. 
The ideal image or work that a company is looking for would ideally match the things you've written on your resume. Make sure to rewrite and adjust your answers for each company you apply to. In the case of mid-career recruitment, if you write appealing things about you that refer to your university days, the recruiter might think you didn't do so well at work or you don't have that much work experience. So make sure to write down your achievements or good points at work, especially in these areas. So for your current situation, sometimes you may need to write down the New Year's station from your phone. In this portion, you enter the time required from the workplace to your home when you fill in commuting time. Also list down the number of dependents you are supporting from your income. Since it's written here excluding spouse, then enter the number of dependents excluding your spouse, like your husband or wife. If you're a man and have a spouse, then mark yes. The spouse's obligation to support is marked as no if the spouse is working full-time, and is marked as yes if the spouse is not working. So, kamusta? Is everything clear? Okay ba tayo? It seems like there is a lot to remember about filling in a Japanese resume, but in order to leave a good impression, you have to remember these details and fill in your resume properly. It may seem confusing at first, but try making Jap so that you won't make any mistakes when you finally fill out your resume. Filling out your resume properly is the first step to getting that job. I'm sure you can fill in the resume properly and carefully. Kaya kaya mo yan! It may seem a little difficult, but in the end, it will be worth the effort. Again, Swimmy Channel will continue to provide useful information for living in Japan. Please check out the other videos. I like this video. I want to see more. I want to support you. If you have these kinds of thoughts, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching! See you in the next video!